Okay, so about two weeks ago, I thought it would be fun to theory craft the strongest and most secure combination lock possible in Super Mario Maker 2. There never really was a point to this in the first Mario Maker, since everyone was able to download each course and therefore everyone was able to take a look at the combination. But since Nintendo, sadly, decided that editing downloaded courses is no longer a thing in Mario Maker 2, that also means that, at least in theory, it should be possible to upload a combination lock stage that is so secure that it becomes cryptographically impossible to beat it. So I sat down and naively started to scribble together a couple of different designs for locks, not knowing what I just did. So over the last two weeks, I spent way, way, way too much time trying to come up with the absolute perfect combination lock in Super Mario Maker 2. It honestly almost drove me insane. So today we're going to take a look back at this journey. We will not only succeed in building a lock that is mathematically impossible to beat, but we will also fail miserably at trying to upload a truly impossible stage. So you ready? Let's do this! Alright, so before we hop into Mario Maker and try to theorycraft the perfect lock, we first quickly have to talk about how combination locks function in the first place. So how do locks work? The probably easiest way to think of the safety of a combination lock is to assume that each lock has a certain numerical safety. That's how many different combinations it has. Obviously. The interesting thing here is that this number is defined by two things. The base of the lock and its length. A standard bicycle lock, for example, often contains of a set of four numbers between 0 to 9. So each spot in the lock is one out of 10 different numbers. We're going to call this number the base of the lock. The length of the lock is 4 in this case, since we enter 4 times a number between 0 to 9. This gives us 10 to the power of 4 different inputs, or 10,000 in total. So I know that all of this sounds super obvious, so why are we talking about it in the first place? Well, the reason we're talking about this is that one of the two factors that factor into a lock's strength is much, much more important than the other one. The length of a lock makes it way more secure than its base value. We can easily see this if we add once 5 to the base of our bicycle lock and once 5 to its length. A lock that requires us to input 4 times a correct number between 0 and 14 would be a lock which strength is defined by 15 to the power of 4. Such a lock has about 50,000 different inputs. A lock that requires us to input 9 times a random number between 0 to 9 on the flip side has one billion different inputs. So if we truly want to theorycraft the absolutely and totally most secure combination lock possible in Mario Maker, then we have to prioritize the length of the lock at all costs, while its base is less important. So here's where Mario Maker comes into play. In Super Mario Maker, we are limited to 100 entities per subworld, which means that we only have very limited resources to theorycraft the perfect lock. Back in probably 1992, we already took a look at the design for a pretty secure combination lock in Mario Maker. This lock worked with a base of 10 and a length of 12, giving us 1 trillion different inputs. So a lock with 1 trillion different inputs is obviously a really secure lock, but it's nowhere near absolutely safe. The way we made this lock work was the following. Basically, we stacked brave Goombas on top of each other with a Boo and a Muncher on top of them. Whenever our heroic combination lock hacking plumber hits his head against the brick block, one brave Goomba bravely dies and the lock falls down one spot only if all cells are set up in such a way that the boo is at the correct spot, this Koopa is able to walk to the P-switch at the left. This lock has two major flaws. First, since it uses a base of 10, we're only able to give the lock a length of 12 before hitting the entity limit, which is far from optimal. And second, it is unbelievably easy to reverse engineer the code, just by counting how many brave Goombas bravely died before there's no more brave Goombas to cowardly kill. We'll talk about all the problems of making a lock unreverse engineerable in a second, but for now, let's focus on the base and its length. See, when building this lock, I made a really stupid mistake. I focused on building a lock in our lame, standard and boring decimal numerical 
base 10 system. Well, there is absolutely no reason to do so in the Mushroom Kingdom. There is no benefit if a lock has a base of 10. All it does is heavily limiting us with the entity limit. What we need is a much more creative way to represent the lock. Think about the lottery as an example. A standard lottery often wants us to guess six correct numbers between 0 and 47. That's nothing else than trying to brute force a combination lock base 48 with a length of 6. They just make the base really high so that it becomes counterintuitive how many different options a lottery lock actually has. For a perfect Mario Maker lock, we should take the exact opposite approach. We should try to minimize how many different entities we need per lock cell and focus on getting the lock as long as possible possible within the 100 entity limit. So the first idea I had was just to build a really long lock using binary numbers. Binary means that each lock cell only has exactly two inputs. Either no question block didn't get triggered or triggering the question block it was. If we found a way to just combine 40 of such cells into a single lock, then we would already have more than 1 trillion different combinations, while each additional cell would grow this number exponentially. Hooray! So here's the first prototype. Each question block here represents a single digit and has two states, triggered and not triggered. If we trigger a question block, the blaster jumps upwards. The blasters have two different height levels. The idea here is that we only get a flat surface at the top if all blasters are at the correct spot. If a blaster that needs to get triggered doesn't get triggered, then there is a gap at the top. If a blaster that should not get triggered gets triggered, however, then this blaster is one spot too high. Super simple stuff. The way we read this is by using a snake block that slowly transports a cannon to an enemy at the far left. Only if the top is a straight line and therefore all inputs were entered correctly, the cannon reaches the enemy, crushes it and rewards us with a key in the process. Hooray! Sadly, this design has several problems. First, we have to put the blasters onto global ground because otherwise they despawn while we enter the combination. Second, we also have to put global ground at the top so that the cannon does not despawn while the lock gets red. Since icicles aren't global ground anymore, we no longer have a global ground option that does not count towards the enemy limit. So we can only build this lock with a length of a bit over 40. That's slightly better than our previous design, but still pretty meh. Luckily, I just lied to you when I said that there are no more global ground options that do not count towards the entity limit, because there is still something in the game that counts towards the block limit while also being global ground. Something super weird. Cloud blocks in the 3D world style. Yep, I know that is super weird, but normal cloud blocks in 3D world act as global ground. This means that if we build a lock like this in 3D world, we do not have to use platforms on tracks as global ground anymore. Here's what such a lock looks like. This lock has a length of 64 at the base of 2. This means that this super simple lock is able to store about 18 quintillion numbers. 18 quintillions are a billion billions. That's why the secure lock that we got there. Sadly, it doesn't really work for several reasons. First, the springs that we spawn to get the blasters upwards unfortunately also land on global ground, which means that we fill the ELB at some point during the input and no springs can spawn no more. Second, the snake block that we use to read the state of the lock sadly destroys all the blasters that are set too high when reading the lock, meaning it, well, it, um, it just tells us the exact combination. Whoops, so we need to find a better way to input numbers as well as we need to find a better way to read the state of the lock. So the best and cheapest way to read the lock is just to have Mario escort an enemy to the other side. That's not the problem. The real problem is how to do the inputs in such a way that we do not require global ground or any other additional entities. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where stuff gets a bit insane. So. Um, as it turns out, we can ignore global ground entirely if we use spawn blocking and an escort version to read the lock. Check this out. Here we input our code by breaking the brick blocks at the bottom. Each broken brick block means we entered a 1 into our lock. Each unbroken brick block represents a 0. At the top we have red dotted line blocks. And here's the catch. Those red dotted line blocks spawn block bullet blasters. Bullet blasters 
can't spawn while there is a red block occupying their home space. But as soon as a two state block gets flipped, they are suddenly able to spawn again. The basic idea here is the same as before. Each blaster has one of two heights and only the correct combination provides a flat surface for an enemy to walk through. A wrong input either makes the enemy fall down or blocks the path forward entirely. This lock only requires a single enemy that carries a key and a single blaster per lock cell, since we can put the on off block into a different subworld. This lock can be built with a length of 99. The only entity space that isn't used for a lock cell is the enemy that carries the key. All other 99 entity spots are used for the lock. This gives us a base 2 length 99 lock. That's a lock that has 633 octillion different states. That's 633 billion billions billions different combination. That's a lock that can't get brute forced anymore. So the length of this lock is pretty much optimal. The only possible improvement would be to find a way to build a lock without normal entity limit items, which sadly appears to be impossible. But we aren't done here yet, because while it isn't possible to improve the length of the lock anymore, it is actually possible to improve its base value. See, since we are now working with spawn blocking, there is no reason for us to build this in binary. We can actually use many brick blocks per cell as our way of inputting a number. Since the lock needs to remain invisible for Mario while it gets red, the maximum height of brick blocks is 8. 8 brick blocks gives us a base 9, since 0 is also an input option. Here's how this works. There is only one way for the blaster to be at exactly the correct height, and that is when the correct amount of brick blocks got destroyed before. This blaster, for example, only spawns if 7 blocks got destroyed. If a number smaller 7 is entered into the lock, then there is always a brick block remaining that prevents the blaster from spawning. If the number 8 is entered, then the blaster drops down one tile too much. So this gives us a lock that requires us to input 99 times a correct number between 0 and 8. And there is definitely only one correct combination that actually rewards our plumber with a key at the end. So this lock is a lock base 9, length 99. This lock has 29 trigontillion different input options. That's a number with 95 decimal digits. Here's the exact number. It is completely impossible in a cryptographical sense that someone guesses this number by accident. Let's just quickly do a small thought experiment so that all of you get a feeling of why I'm so sure that this lock can't get guessed. Right now, Mario Maker 2 sold about 4 million copies. Let's say every single person that bought Mario Maker up until now decides to dedicate their entire life from now on trying to crack the code. Each person enters a thousand combinations each day. That would mean that 4 billion combinations get entered daily into the lock. To make this a bit simpler, let's assume no one ever enters the same number. So that's 4 billion unique inputs per day and 1 trillion and 460 billion unique inputs per year. So if we divide the strength of the lock by this number, we should know how many years it takes until each combination got entered once, assuming 4 million people tried a thousand times each day. So the answer is about 20 sexvigintillion years. That's a number with 82 zeros. That's several billions of billions of billions of years longer than the universe exists. I'm absolutely, truly, 100% absolutely convinced that this lock can't be guessed. So does that mean that we just theory crafted a stage that can never be beaten once uploaded? Well, sadly no, because there are two problems. First, it is possible to get into the lock via clever use of multiplayer and once inside, the code can be easily read. And second, and that's honestly the much, much bigger problem, modding tools allow it to view downloaded stages so that code can always be read by someone who is modding Mario Maker. I actually uploaded the stage to find out if someone is able to reverse engineer the code using one of those tricks and yup. After only a couple of days online, the stage already got beaten by Mario Maker user NetChan and Link Ganon. Also as a side note, entering the code into the lock is unbelievably tedious because, you know, sometimes you want to break a brick block 
but you break two brick blocks, which means you have to start all over again. It took me almost four hours to get the whole thing debugged and the randomized code into it, and I was really, really happy once I finally managed to upload the whole thing. So why am I telling you this? Well, because when I entered the name for the stage, the Switch keyboard glitched out and dropped an O. So the stage is now forever going to be called the impossible combination lock, since there is no way that I enter that code again. O's are overrated anyway. Anyway, so here we have it. Is it possible to build a truly impossible level in Super Mario Maker using combination locks? Well, sadly no mainly because of modding. But as it turns out, it is possible to build a cryptographically impossible lock that is so secure that it definitely can't be guessed anymore. Huge and enormous thanks to all the wonderful people on Twitter who took a look at the first and second lock design and helped me debug the whole thing. Seriously guys, you are amazing. So here we have it, an impossible to guess lock that sadly can be cheated by modding. And this is the end of the video. Except, as it turns out, it actually surprisingly isn't. So let me share a little story with you. So a couple of weeks ago, a US gamer journalist hit me with a quick mail telling me that he was thinking about writing a quick story about passcode levels in Super Mario Maker 2 and whether I'd be willing to answer him a couple of questions. And I was like, sure, why not? And then, then I started to wonder what is actually the most secure combination lock. So I sat down and started to tinker around with it and this is what caused this whole madness. So it took our US gamer journalist a while to get back to me and once he replied I actually was already half finished with this video. So here's where this gets interesting because the first question he asked me was something along the lines of do you think VTrack's passcode level is optimally designed or do you think that his design can still be improved? And I was like which V-Track design again? <laughs> so, um, as it turns out, I wasn't the only one wasting way too much time of my life trying to get a meaningless number as high as possible. Because as it turns out, the legendary Mario Maker creator v -Drag was working on this as well. And as it turns out, he found a way to build a combination lock that is much, much, much more secure than the design we just fury crafted. So I'm not going to spoil how he did it because he made an amazing and really entertaining video on how it works that pretty much continues at exactly the point where this video ends. I honestly can't recommend you wonderful ladies and gentlemen his video enough. It's a really fun quick watch and well and his combination lock eats our combination lock for breakfast. The link is in the description. So with that being said, thanks for watching this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially combination lock today and I want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye.